Today's guest is Jason Prawl. Jason was one of the first episodes on this podcast when, back when we only had audio and it was so awesome to have him back on again, talking about his new book, Beyond Longevity, a proven plan for healing faster, feeling better and thriving at any age. Um, just came out right before this release on December 27th. It's published through Hay House. It's on Barnes and Noble, Amazon everywhere. Um, I think he's nominated for an award on it. Jason is absolutely incredible. Um, if you've never heard of Jason or never heard from him before, he's well known for his documentary film series called the human longevity project. One of my favorites ever, where he went all over the world and interviewed, interviewed centenarians, like in blue zones, people who lived to a hundred years and asked them all sorts of interesting questions. Um, paralleled alongside like the dream team of health experts. It's just an incredible series. Um, and in this book, what we're going to talk about today, Jason's getting into Jason's, I like, I, it's a resonant soul because he, what he, he knows all the nerdy stuff, he know, you know, he's had his functional medicine practice. He's been doing all these things and he sits back and he's like, where are we getting off? What really matters? Hold on a second. You know, that's kind of his approach and he does such a good job speaking to it. Um, so we're getting into the new book, what he means by beyond longevity, All right? Like, are we getting a little too overly focused on living to such and such years old and like fighting aging? And, you know, it's like, what actually matters in terms of feeling and thrive, feeling amazing and thriving, no matter what age you're at. And just, man, just get ready for the wisdom bombs. Such a great episode. Here's Jason Prawl. All right, Jason, I've raved to so many of my friends. I've raved to you uh, about the Human Longevity Project. It is for real the only time I have ever watched something over again like that because I was like taking notes. I loved it. You did such a good job on it. And it's so cool that now you have Beyond Longevity, your new book. So I thought we could jump all into that today. Um, little background on Jason, guys. Like it's it's cool. I It's like, I don't even know how to put enough words on it, how you blend together like the nitty gritty science nerdy, you know, the cutting edge, all of that stuff with ancient wisdom, with practical, you know, logical type thinking with spirituality, you know, you pull it all together. And so, um, I'm excited to hear kind of how you've blended a lot of these things in this book. You know, I noticed that you have mindfulness in here and getting rid of stuck emotions in terms of a longevity book kind of gives people the idea, right? So first of all, like, why did you write this book? Let's start there and then we'll get into some of the cool stuff in it. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it, ties into this idea of, of, of longevity that I think is being propelled into the culture right now, which is that we can live forever and that aging is a disease that needs to be cured. Um, or even to this idea that if we just somehow harness the tech that is now at our fingertips and that is coming, that we could extend life to 150 or 200 years. And while I think that's great, um, I think there's some deeper questions that we must ask in that pursuit. And then on the flip side, you know, there's, there's been a lot of work with like the blue zones in particular, right? Michelle Poulon was the demographer and, and Dan Butner and National Geographic did a great job of, of, of bringing to life some of these regions around the world known as blue zones um, that have centenarians, people that, that make it to 100 years old um, at, a, at a much higher rate than other parts, right? To, to the mm -hmm. point where it's statistically significant and it's interesting to look at, right? And so yeah. there's this study of those people, right? And what are they doing and how do they make it to 100, year, 100 years old and what's going on there? And so I think in both those camps, we can miss the boat, you know, in, in such yeah. a huge degree. Like we can look backwards and say, you know, how did this 90 year old, 98 year old make it to 98 and what are they doing now and all these things. And we can still miss a, a vast majority of the actual things that are contributing mm -hmm. to health and, and, and longevity and well being. And so that really is the crux of what I wanted to get across was mm -hmm. we can't just look backwards and we can't just look to the future, right? There's actual fundamental questions that are pertaining to us and that have pertained to us for thousands and thousands of years, really since the, the dawn of man, right? And it's been, they've been asked by every spiritual and religious um, sect and, and, and group that, that has ever existed and, and just the average person, right? Who am I? What is life? What does it mean to be born? What does it mean to die? Um, what is health? Like, where does it come from, right? These are fundamental questions. And so that was really the aim of the book was to try to really get to the core of a lot of those and to some degree actually define aging because I hear all this stuff about uh, aging and anti-aging and aging backwards and reversing aging. And it's all kind of nonsense because nobody's actually defined aging. And if I asked a hundred people, <laughs> whether they have medical degrees or they're functional or whatever the case is, 
what is aging, I'm going to get 100 different responses. And in fact, that's yeah. actually what I did with the Human Longevity Project. I asked yeah. so many of my experts, what is aging? And I, and I flat out got a, a different response. And, and, and I stumped many of these experts, right? And that's not to uh, demean them at all. They're actually brilliant minds. But this is a question we overlook in the health yeah. world. And I think it's an interesting thing. Yeah. You know, it's funny just a minute ago, my 15 year old son was in here and he's like, mom, look, this is only how far I can bend over if my back is straight. And he has like almost no extension of his hips. His hamstrings are so tight from football and skiing and whatnot. And I was like, I said to him, that's amazing that you can still like, like I would definitely have pulled like a tendon or something by now. And I, when I said that to him, I thought about it and I was like, yeah, because I'm 40 years old. And like, even though I take so many supplements and I'm very healthy for my age, like I'm aging, I made like, I'm, my body is eventually going to get older and like, <laughs> that's just how it works. But I, you know, I like to look at it as supporting, supporting the body as much as we possibly can, no matter what your age is. And that kind of leads me to, I really wanted to hit on this chapter three that you have on resolving disease or building health. Oh, I love this kind of talk. You know, when I think of the gut microbiome, I'm kind of obsessed with that right now. You know, we've been in this like fight, fight, fight type energy, like kill everything, kill, 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 you know, our sanitary lifestyles. It's kill, 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 fight the bad things. But what we're learning so much is more about nurturing, nurturing a flourishing environment. Can you talk about your idea? You know, why did you name this chapter resolving disease or building health? Can you speak on that? I mean, this comes from my practice, my clinical practice, right? In, in sort of functional integrative medicine. And that's that's really where I started off my um, sort of career, I guess, in the, in mm -hmm. the health world. And um, I was taught by some really amazing teachers about how to look at um, these, these symptoms and these syndromes and these sort of disease, these labeled diseases in a different way. Yeah. Right? yeah. It's brilliant, right? So if we look at um, something like um, high blood pressure, right? Like, it's not looking at that as the as the cause, right? As the mm -hmm. issue, it, that is the result of something downstream. And so we can actually look right. at a variety of biomarkers to figure out what's really going on underneath the hood, and that's yeah. great, right? But we can also, even using those, you know, I'd say more holistic, more integrative ways of thinking, we can still get caught in this paradigm mm -hmm. of there's something wrong with you. There's mm -hmm. there's a disease taking place. The body's making mistakes, and I'm going to come in and fix it, right? Or, mm -hmm. or you as a practitioner, or you as a, as a as an individual on your own can go in and fix something that's wrong with your body. Your body's not doing something correctly. And while there that that to some degree is true, right? There's a mm -hmm. there's a, a miscommunication going on in the body. There's a breakdown of communication. There's a breakdown of of intelligence. Um, and there's a loss of what I in the book called coherence, right? This idea yeah. of energy transfer and information transfer effectively. Um, that can break down, no question. But but what's really going on there? And so um, it, it kind of flips the whole thing on its head and say, well, let's not try to solve this disease process. Yeah. Rather, let's look at what's blocking your natural right. state of health from expressing, right? Because that, yeah. if we can get to that point, that level of acceptance, which is that I have an innate ability to be healthy, yeah. then, then, that, then that puts me in a different perspective that, that all of a sudden mm -hmm. says, okay, well, what's blocking that? What's preventing that from expressing? And then I can go down that, that rabbit hole, right? But, but the doctor, the functional medicine practitioner, the naturopath, the whatever the case, the shaman, like anybody that we look to that may be able to help us cannot induce health. Health is divine. It, it is your natural birthright to express health, right? To express yeah. healthy tissue. And so this is, um, this is at the core, I think, of who we are. Um, and so that is, it, it's just a different starting point. And, and, and a lot of times I see there's just this constant searching for something that's wrong instead yeah. of accepting what's actually going on, what, what's right, what's, what's fundamental. Yeah, I've learned so much. And I guess the way I approach my coaching is so much more body led mm. now than me as the smart practitioner with my, you know, lab reports. I mean, I, I do that and it, it has value. Like totally. you're saying, like, you totally. know, it's like, okay, you're like missing. You've got like overgrowth of bacteria, like stuff like that matters. And so much of my approach has also become what is your body telling you? It's like, I need way more sleep. Okay. Just, just do it. Like that. that's, it's telling you like what, it, what did your body say when you ate that thing? I don't know. It's fine. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. What you're uh, pointing to, what you're pointing to is really important. Right. And, and it mm -hmm. is kind of the essence of what I'm talking about, which is that uh -huh. now it's getting us to this idea of, 
oh, my body's actually the thing that can, can, can deliver health to me. I just need mm -hmm. to figure things out. I need to listen more. Listen. And as a practitioner, we need to get our practitioners in that mindset as well. Yep. But, yep. but the person that's trying to, to resolve their health issues or their, their, their challenges, this is where we can start to listen more. And I love what you're pointing to because that is so essential because so many of us have taught, uh, have been taught and con been conditioned to look outside of ourselves to solve the problem, to not mm -hmm. listen to our body. So we don't even really know how, right? So there's a practice right. of just figuring that out again, which, which really is a practice. And it's something I'm still getting better at every day because it's, yeah. it's a subtle listening. It's yep. a subtle paying attention to all the minor things. And for probably someone like you, Tara, I know for me, I was very used to the gross feelings. In other words, the things that were impactful and big and strong yeah. and sharp. So anything yeah. that was like, you know, caffeine's a perfect example in the West, right? right? We can feel it, right? But some of these right. more subtle things, like right. if somebody does Qigong or yoga, um, and they're not quite sure if they can feel the subtle energies, right? Or even yeah. emotions. Many of us aren't, aren't even really um, trained or, or practiced to feel emotions and identify the little subtleties yep. and emotions, right? So yep. these are things that we really need to get back in touch with. And, and a lot of times it has to do with quieting things down, slowing things down, and really practicing what's here. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I came down with something. We had to reschedule our podcast because I was, you know, I was like, I can feel it, you know, when you, and, and uh, to be totally vulnerable, I was, I'm dating somebody and he was like deathly ill, like, I, like really bad. And I was, I, I could feel it coming. I, I was like, oh crap, I'm gonna be in bed for like three days, you know? And I did right after I emailed you, I came down with a fever. I was kind of delirious. I was like, and I just have practiced this so much. I was just like, what do you need body? What do you need? And I like to say, even if I'm just entertaining it and I'm being silly and I'm making up stuff. Well, I mean, I heard like fish oil, like so much fish oil, like, please, please, please. Like so much fish oil, so much fish oil, so much fish oil. I was like, okay, I'm just, maybe I'm making stuff up. I took all the immune boosters I had. I heard sleep like now, like just as much sleep as you can possibly get lots of water, actually electrolytes. Like I was just entertaining, whatever I woke up. We actually probably could have still done the podcast. I just don't want to email you again. I woke up like normal. I couldn't believe it. I was like, okay, good job body, you know, and I can't tell you how many experiences I've had like that. And I love, and that's why I want to kind of move into this part two of your book. Cause I feel like what you're talking about here, a lot of this, it reminds me of regenerative agriculture, to be honest with you, Jason. Cause like regenerative agriculture is like, how do we mimic nature? How do we support nature? Like we dropped into this planet and we think we're like so smart, but if we can just like be quiet as you're talking about and just observe what is conducive to health and mimic that as much as we can. That to me is the mo most intelligent approach. And I see a lot of that in what you have here in, in part two. So um, you're talking about health span, which I love, right? It's, and that's how I see it too. It's like, I'm going to get old. I'm going to yeah. get old and I'm going to die, but I want to be as healthy as I can through that whole process, you know, and that's health span. And so you start this off with sleep, light and circadian rhythm. And I love, that's what you kicked it off with. Can you share why you started with those things? Yeah. And, and you're hitting on something I think is really key for us as society going forward with all that we do, right? This idea of biomimicry, right? We're seeing this in yeah. technology, which is really good. And, and as a former engineer, like it really hits home, this idea of figuring out basically learning from nature and applying yeah. those to our man-made technologies and approaches. And so here's the thing, there's all these things, um, technology is coming in a brilliant way. We're going to be able to monitor unbelievable things in our blood and our smartphones, and we're going to be able to track all things, you know, to no end. We have uh, biologics like, um, you know, uh, stem cells and, and peptides and the list goes on and on about, with those things. And that's all well and good. But if we keep doing the things that are destroying, uh, our own well-being and yeah. forgetting the fact that we're connected to everything. So if we're destroying our well-being, then that means we're destroying the well-being of, of our environment yes. and those around us and vice versa. So the more we continue to destroy the environment and, and create harm, we're just going to feed it back into our own biology. There's just no way around it, right? So um, this becomes an important factor that we need to recognize that, that the, the, the true path for not just the individual but for our society, for, for humanity as a whole to live longer and live healthier is to harmonize with everything that life is, yes. right? So, so this means that there's, there's general rules that life has set up, right? Circadian rhythm is probably one of the most fundamental, mm -hmm. which is that our biology and the biology of pretty much every living organism on this planet is operating on, on fundamentally a light cycle, right? And there's other yeah. things too, like movement and, and food that are playing a role here. But, but this idea of life of, of daily cycles, the sun, uh, sun and, and, and the moon, 
those are critical to our biology, right? And, and we have something called circadian rhythm that in 2017 was awarded, uh, three scientists were awarded the, yeah. the Nobel Prize, right? For studying chronobiology, how this circadian rhythm, this natural 24 hour day and night cycle impacts us on a biological level, right? And so we know that, it, that, that light comes primarily into the eyes, the optic chiasm, the suprachiasmatic nucleus is sort of the, the master clock in the brain. It talks to the hypothalamus and the pituitary to govern a lot of different hormonal rhythms and processes, yeah. right? Cortisol and melatonin being probably the most well-known that, that many people are familiar with. And we, we need cortisol to be high in the morning and we want it to be low at night, right? And, and conversely, melatonin is the opposite, low in the morning and, and high at night. Well, that's guided by the light, right? So, and, and we have an unbelievable amount of, of science showing this, right? Research yeah. papers and studies um, on in, insomniacs going out into the forest uh, yep. and, and getting back in touch with that natural circadian yep. rhythm, getting out of this sort of, uh, this artificial light cycle that we've created for ourselves and everything starts to shift, not just sleep, right? We know that, that people that, that work um, uh, night shifts, nurses, doctors are, are prime candidates for this, all cause mortality increases. Every single disease uh, increases dramatically if you're if you're not sleeping at night, if you're working at night and you're sleeping during the day, right? So yeah. there's something fundamental about this. But we know that this that there's these little clock genes, right? These period and clock genes and BMOL. There's a whole host of little genes that sit in front of a variety of other genes in the cell that tell it what time of day it is based on the signals that our body is picking up. So based on this light signal, based on to some degree temperature, to some degree food, to some degree exercise, that's going to tell our biology in every cell of our body, your liver, your kidneys, your bones, right, your mammary glands, everywhere yep. is going to pick up a signal about what time of day it is and which genes to express and not express. So the thyroid alone, I was looking at a, at a, at a, a research paper that, that showed that uh, the thyroid had something like a thousand genes turn on at 9 a.m. and then and like 800 turn off and then at 5 p.m. It, it was reversed like a different set of genes turned on thousands wow. of them right? and these are transcripts right so these are sort of yeah. telling the body what to do and that was just on the thyroid alone right so that's wow. governing um, a lot of things about metabolism the thyroid right right so, and, and this is everywhere so if we don't get that right and this is what i saw in clinical practice people would come to me with cancers and autoimmune diseases and digestive issues skin problems depressions you name it didn't matter what it was if that wasn't aligned if somebody didn't have their circadian rhythm yep. uh, aligned then then everything about their their body was going to be out of whack because the mm -hmm. body's trying to compensate mm -hmm. for something that's out of alignment mm -hmm. so that's a mm -hmm. fundamental thing that, mm -hmm. that if it so in other words, as we have this amazing technology and stem cells and all this regenerative medicine stuff coming online, but, but one doesn't have the circadian rhythm in tune on yep. a regular basis, yep. you can take all that stuff and it's not going to make up for the fact that your circadian rhythm is out of whack. And so that must be corrected. Yes. So we see this across the board, right? When do you eat? How much do you eat? Right. This gets into so a lot of the stuff that you work with, uh, Tara. Like, mm -hmm. are you eating too much at the wrong time of day? Are you right. eating too much in total? Because your digestive capacity is only such, right? It's it's limited. So no matter what you're eating, if it's too much beyond just sort of the caloric intake, your body is unable to fully digest and metabolize what you're feeding it because it's too much in that mm -hmm. one sitting. Mm -hmm. right? So these are the things that we, we must get right. And, and we don't have to be perfect with this stuff, but, but we must understand them because all the regenerative medicine therapies in the, in the world aren't going to save us from this daily living if it's out of balance. And that's not to even get into this idea of the, the negative thoughts that are running, the belief patterns, yeah. all the conditioned emotional beliefs and, 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 and processes that are, that are happening. So those are huge, right? Huge. And that's probably the biggest component to how not only how well we age and how healthy we are, but how what are the state of our well being, mm -hmm. right? Like how happy am I? Exactly. Today? How exactly. much can I be present moment by moment with you here right now, Tara? Right? Like yeah. these are really really critical factors, and that's really what yeah. we want. I think the, yeah. the idea of living to two hundred is, I mean, it's kind of silly, right? Like especially if you're miserable. Now. <laughs> yeah, I I mean I I am living exactly. I have lived through exactly what you're saying. And I was just having this conversation with a friend because people look at me like I'm some sort of like type a, like perfectionist, like rigid. And I'm like, no, no, no. You, when I talk about like my bedtime and my wake up time and not you're eating a few hours before bed, you're disciplined. that's a but different thing, but it actually doesn't even feel like discipline anymore totally. because all that it is, 
is I have felt what I feel like when I live like that. And then I felt what I feel like when I end up going to some event and I stay up till two in the morning and it takes me three days to get back on schedule. And I'm like, it is like a, a different reality almost. I'm like, just like, you, it's easy to want to, once you get used to it. Cause it's like, I could either be thriving and happy and present and energized and my immune system strong and all those things, or I could be and like, you know, right when, before I got sick, I had a late night event. I was up, you know, it was like, it was worth it. Sort of, <laughs> I got sick, but it, it threw off my circadian rhythm and it, it's true. I, my two things I always tell people that are kind of like newbie. I'm like, if you want to like make fat loss or like weight maintenance easier, my biggest tips are don't eat three hours before bed, yep. go to bed earlier and, um, have a consistent like sleep and wake up time. That's it. And make sure that that includes enough sleep for you. That's it. Just start there. I promise you, you can start getting on a good groove. So I cannot agree with you more. I mean, that's basically circadian rhythm in a really simple way of teaching it. But yeah. And then last thing, sorry, I'm like talking too much, but the light, the light at night. Oh mm. my gosh. Because I'm pretty good about like not being on my phone. I have candles all up in my room, you know, the remote ones and stuff. And over the weekend, I was like, yeah, whatever. It's the weekend. And I was like on TikTok, like late at night. And when I like close my eyes, I felt anxious. I like overwhelmed. Like my brain was just like processing way too much stuff. And it was like a really uncomfortable feeling. I was like, I don't ever want this. This sucks. So yeah. yeah. What, what you're hitting on, I think is, is critical and it's, it's often overlooked in most health circles. Um, certainly a lot of the sort of functional integrative medicine, um, is this idea of stimulus, right? We, we, have, yeah. we are overstimulated overstimulated. Um, yes. we have way too much stimulus going on and it comes in all forms, right? Because we have so much media. Look, and I'm, I'm as guilty as anybody because right. I love listening to podcasts and learning yeah. new things. Right. And, and there's always something I want to engage with. So there's this balance, I think. Yes. Um, and to some degree, we must accept whatever our, our desire is. In other words, yeah. you know, if you and I Tara are like, you know what, I'm going balls out. I'm going to be listening to things. I'm going to be learning things. I'm going to be engaging with things. Right. If we just need to accept the fact that there's a positive to that, which is that I'm following a passion and I'm engaged and I'm, uh -huh. I, I'm really enjoying that part of life. And there may be a detriment, which is to say that I'm overstimulating, I'm over, yep. over taxing the mental system uh, yep. of, of, of myself. Right. So yep. this is where I think if we can bring in some balance, right, if we can bring in some quiet, mm -hmm some darkness. So not even just the light, I mean, the light is critical, but even just the, the stimulation overall, right? Yeah. Getting off social media, getting out of all these conversations, sitting with ourselves, yeah. contemplating yourself. I mean, even meditating on death is like probably one of the most profound things that we can do when yeah. it comes to longevity, because it, it brings us into this realization that life is precious, that it yeah. is temporary. No matter yeah. how many people try to tell us that we can live forever or we can, no, it is temporary. Yeah. That is the way this is. It's the way it works. So, you know, shutting down all these sort of stimulation, it, I think it really becomes a critical part to our, our modern society because it's it's tough to get away from for most people, especially if they're living in a sort of modern city environment. Yeah. And I think that's why going on a path of healing. So you learn how to emotionally regulate better, like investing in some sort of therapy or plant medicines or energy healers, or just like really diving into a meditation practice and like going all in on that is so key. Cause I think a lot of the overstimulation is running from not knowing like I have compassion on people. It's not like shame on you. You won't sit oh, with your feelings, there, right? Like it's like, they, yeah, it's like, I don't, it's so uncomfortable and they don't know how, you know, yeah. and it, yeah, that happens to me, but it's like, but also you learn, it's just like, I think it's because I meditate and probably a lot of plant medicines. It's just like, wow, I'm, what am I feeling right now? Hmm, girl, you're feeling nervous. Why are you yeah. feeling nervous? Like, Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. That's okay. I'm just going to sit with that for a little bit. Like I'm feeling nervous about that. Like, what, what do you think is making you nervous about it? Right. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. no, girl, you're enough. You know what I mean? Like, the, well, you've done a lot of work, of right? And that's the thing. And so, <laughs> right. so what you're naming here is, is something that's going on in the background for all of us, all yeah. of the time, well, I shouldn't say yeah. all the time, all of us at some point in time. And for many of us, most of the time, right? And so when I'm talking about stimulation, this overstimulated reality that we've created for ourselves is definitely true. And we can, and we can shut that down and we can, act, it's a little bit more uh, conscious, a little, a little easier to do that. Even as hard as that is, it's a little easier. The thing that's a little bit more challenging that takes a little bit more self-awareness is the stuff that's going on in the background, what you're talking yeah. about. Because even when we might get into a quiet place, we're walking in nature, we're meditating, uh, or we're just, we're just laying there relaxing, the, the nervous system can be just on overdrive, right? And we think, oh, I'm relaxing, but the nervous system's still jacked up. And a lot of this yeah. comes from childhood. 
primarily, yep, right? And, yep. and other traumas that we might be even passed on through through generations or even from uh -huh. life to life. And so uh -huh. this this thing that happens when we're young, we have an underdeveloped nervous system. The brain isn't online yet. We don't have the conscious capacity to understand things except through the subconscious feeling, right? So yeah. when we're infants, we just feel things, right? And and it's fear and it's, and it's uh, disappointment and it's all these different things, but they're just feelings. We can't name them. We can't really right. identify. We don't have a conscious grasp on them. Right. And a lot of times we can't process them because we don't have the full nervous system online. Right. So all these experiences get caught, you know, and we call them trauma, but they're really mm -hmm. just stock experiences, things that haven't yeah. been fully processed. Yeah. Right? And so uh, that's what's sort of governing the nervous system. And that sets the tone, like actually, like not only, I mean, the expression is setting the tone, but like actually setting the nervous system tone in, in the body. So some people can have a, a tone that's just so much higher. And yeah. that's their rest point because their their hypervigilance is sort of turned on from a young age because their their surroundings didn't provide enough safety for that individual. Yeah. And this is to some degree all of us, right? But but some of us have that more than others. And so that the work that a lot of the work that you've done, right, and the work that we we've done together and experienced and and talked about is getting to the core of some of those yeah. unprocessed experiences that we might call trauma. Um, and when those get processed, then our nervous system can now reset to a more uh, sort of slow state, a more balanced state, a, a, a more restful state, which doesn't mean it stays there all the time. It just means that when it does come back down to rest, it can it can drop lower. It can drop into a, yeah. a greater sense of well-being. And right. that is, is, a, is a fundamental thing when it comes to longevity. So again, hopefully I'm painting a picture here where yeah. there's so much going on in one's life that these new therapeutics, as brilliant as they are, as excited as I am for them, mm -hmm. they're not going to save us from these things. Yeah. Your life is way too complex to overcome yeah. than you know, just the injecting some stuff. Right. Yeah, it's just not gonna happen. Or 100%. taking supplements or working out or doing these things. Those are all great. That's a part of the equation, but there's deeper aspects to our, our well being that, yeah. that really need to be looked at if we wanna consider living a really long life in a, in a sort of a graceful way. Yeah. I want to fast forward, you know, since we're kind of on this to chapter eight processing stuck emotion, yeah. can you share your thoughts on, it's funny. I, I, I love how things work. Um, <laughs> I just had a friend message me out of the blue and he was saying how, you know, he's done a lot of, he's, you know, he's done plant medicines. He's done tons of therapy. He's really made some huge strides in his strides in his life, but kind of traumatic upbringing and a lot of rights. And he's like, my HR, he's like, it's weird. Cause I feel like I'm like, really zen, honestly, like a lot of the time he's pretty, I, I can, his personality is pretty chill, you know? And he's like, I feel like I'm in my very sympathetic a lot, like not taking things personally. And like, you know, like, I feel like I'm in a good place, but my HRV has just been tanked and I'm like mm. really trying to figure that out, you know? And he's like, it's probably something, probably something I just haven't found yet, like emotionally or, you know, perhaps physiologically as well. But, um, you know, I bet there's a lot, it's kind of like, just like you're saying, it's like, it's hard to access sometimes. It's just like, I don't know what's going totally. on in there, you know? So what do you say no to that? Question. Yeah. I mean, there's, there's so much to this, what we would call trauma and processing stuck emotion. There's, there's things that, and look, there's the plant medicine world, and that is a fantastic way to go. Um, and from my experience, the, the plant medicines are sort of magic in their own right. And, and one of the things they do is they open our system up, right? They sort of yeah. um, get us to a place of, of open acceptance on an energetic level. And yeah. the practitioner is really doing a lot of the work as well as the individual sort of on, the, let's say the soul level. So yeah. there's this, there's this sort of divine organization that can happen in that totally. space because we are now opened up. Um, it can also introduce some interesting, let's say negative things that might, might come at you that more challenges, more challenging yeah. experiences. So right. it's not all just roses in that world, but, but it's, it's fantastic in its own right. But the, mm -hmm. the, the, the therapist, the, the shaman, whoever is there, acting as the, the practitioner in that space is critical to yeah. how deep and how profound yeah. that experience can be, right? Yeah. Just like in any other session, whether it's EMDR or family constellation, there's all these other therapeutic tools out there and modalities. Right. And, and, and it's not the modality that is the magic. It's the person that yep. is working with it. And can they work with you in a way to unlock sort of this magic that's already there? And so there's that's divine right. organization when we start to process these things. And there's a lot of different modalities and, and, and ways to do it. I will say that I think there's some things that are some some practices that are better than others at, at different aspects of let's say trauma, right? Uh -huh. So when it comes to things like relational things, like and we have an attachment system, right? And this yeah. forms with our caregivers, right? Early in life, typically with mom and dad. And so if the attachment system 
uh, ends up forming that is more anxious. In other words, the, the caregiver was there and then not there. The, the, the little one wasn't able to fully count on the presence of the caregiver. And there's more of an anxious attachment style. This is like um, typically the female lead in a, in a romantic comedy where when they <laughs> yeah. start getting close and the, and the, and the woman is, is like, oh my gosh, like he, he, I think he's going to run away. And, and she just goes like full press, right? Like yeah. at some point in the movie, she's full court press and he gets freaked out and he's like, no, 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 no. And that's more of the, the avoidant strategy. Yeah. So it's like, it's, it's almost like when connection starts to form, there's these, these habituated yes. patterns that yes. it doesn't feel safe because if this connection, which start, is starting to seem real, if it's gone, it's going to hurt so badly. Yeah. So the anxious one is going to just try to hold on for dear life, not yeah. let it go. Right? Right. And the, the avoidant one is going to be like, whoa, 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 whoa I got to run because this is getting yeah. too scary. Right? And so, so all of us run some of this type of pattern. Some people are a little bit more secure. They have a more secure attachment style, in which case you know, when these dynamics are unfolding, they're a little bit more safe and secure, like in sort of this dating style relationship. Yeah. And I was one that had both. I ran both the avoidant yeah. and the anxious, depending on what strategy was needed. And I didn't know I was doing right. This, right? right. But I, I tended to run both until I started to do some attachment work. Right. And one of my favorites for that is adult attachment repair model. So it's specifically designed and it uses a somatic experience to help lock in these things. But so that's attachment wounds. And so it yeah. is an ayahuasca ceremony going to be good for, for resolving attachment ruptures? I, I don't think so. In my experience, right. not as good. Right. It's good at getting soul level stuff. It's good at right. getting generational trauma. It's good yes. at getting childhood wounds. No uh -huh. question. And you can see some of these things more clearly and right. from a different perspective with those medicines. Yep. And and the therapist can actually do some pretty magical stuff. So I don't even want to you know contain it to that. But relational right. stuff, I don't think it works as well from my experience and just naturally yeah. knowing how they yeah. work. So I think when it comes to processing these emotions and these stuck experiences, and again, even cultural stuff, right? Some of us are born into a culture that is that we're processing when we get into this work, we start processing cultural uh, mm -hmm. wounds. And that becomes very interesting. You yeah. know, in past life wounds, I, I believe those uh, are here for us to process as well, sort of these karmic debts, karmic storehouse of, of, of energy, you know, and then lineage stuff, right? I've worked with a ton of people that have Jewish lineage, um, uh, black lineage, and there's a lot of stuff that comes through that aren't directly related to the individual that, that the individual has to face. Like it or not, that's, that's here, it's in the tissues, it's in the, the system. And it, in order to provide a deeper sense of well-being, it must be processed. There's just no way around it. And look, we don't have to actually go into the content when we process these things. That's what's cool. Whether yeah. it's, again, with the plant medicines or with some of these other therapies, the content may show up, but it doesn't always. I've processed so much of my own stuff that like, I don't know what it is. I don't know where it came from. It didn't. And some things that, I, that had content that wasn't from this life. And so it's really interesting how some of these things come through. But, but as, we, as we process these things, um, a new sense of well-being from, from the nervous yeah. system level, from the body yeah. level, uh, things can unwind. The fascia can unwind. The tissues can unwind. Yeah. You start seeing reality different, right? So your mental, emotional processes totally. show up differently. You attract money and people and passion and purpose and jobs. And yeah. your whole reality begins to shift because you've, you've gotten out of this configuration. We're all yeah. in some kind of configuration that is limited, right? And our, our true expansive selves are much bigger, more grand, like yeah. unbelievable and yeah. the capacity and our gifts and what we're here to do and who we really are is so unbelievable. But we've, we've, we've configured ourselves based on yeah. these, this difficult reality that we find ourselves in. Yeah. And so, so a lot of this, as we process these things, we, we reconfigure into our true selves, into our yeah. more aligned, uh, divine version of ourselves. And, and when we walk through the world with that, that's amazing, right? And, yeah. and I'm, I'm only at the beginning part of this journey, but it shows up enough yeah. and I've dabbled enough and I've experienced enough to know that like, it, it, it's where the juice is. Like it's not yeah. in living a long time. Living a long time serves a really valuable role in my opinion, in the sense that the more elders we have, the more wisdom we can pass yeah. on to younger generations, right? right. So, so living a long time can be of service. But yeah. trying to extend one's life to 200 or 500 years just from some ego driven thing, it's not really <laughs> serving yourself or humanity in any yeah. way. Right. Yeah. So, so that's kind of how I'm thinking about these things is like, I don't really care if I live to 100 or not. I yeah. think it would be great if I could so that I can pass yeah. my wisdom yeah. down. But I'm really, 
I'm trying to get here more. I'm trying to get yeah. into the moment more and more and stay here as long as, as possible, which at this point isn't very long. I'm usually <laughs> thinking about the future and I'm often, you know, yeah. working from the past, right? Yeah. So these are things that I'm constantly trying to resolve within myself. But that seems to me a much more um, uh, worthwhile goal is to get into the present as much as I can. You're putting words to these experiences so well. And I know that I resonate so deeply with what you're saying. And I know that the only way you can really speak on that is to live through it. And even to live through it, it's still difficult to put words to, totally. you know, just the, I, the way I simply put it is just, I feel like I'm living in a different reality, like a different self, like a, it's a, you know, and it is, it's, you, you can tell that the way you operate in life, the way you think about life, the way you see yourself, the way your body feels, the way your relationships feel like everything feels different. And I just wanted to highlight, I love what you said about like, ayahuasca is really great for this. And then other things are good for this. And like, I love this. I, I've had sometimes that, you know, I'll have clients say, well, I don't know if I really want to go to anybody else because I've been going to my therapist for 20 years, you know, and right. I'm like, oh, no, 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 it's okay to explore all you sorts to do of all different, of it. yeah, it's okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, oh, well, and, and, and one of the things that I love, it, because in the book, I, I talk, um, I reference Ayurveda a little bit, uh -huh. not, not a huge way, but, but I bring it in enough. And because it's a, it's a, it's a modality, it's a framework. Yeah. Um, that I find to be unbelievable. And, and yeah. through something like Ayurveda, they have, they have these uh, panchakarmas, basically these cleanses, right? Yeah. These 10 or 21 day or even longer cleanses uh -huh. that, that are actually quite um, intricate in, in, in how they work. But fundamentally, the Ayurvedic framework is, is beautiful because it, it doesn't separate mind and body, right? It, yeah. it, it views them as distinct, but not separate. Right? Yeah, so when we cleanse the body with these sort of uh, panchakarma techniques, we're pulling what they call ama, right? which is like this metabolic waste. It's a sticky, morbid metabolic waste. Right? And, and Western science, we, we, might, we identify this stuff too. Right? We can call it yeah. oxidative stress and, and all this damage that's accumulating in the cell yeah. and in the tissues and what have you. We can identify that, and that's great. Well, they call it ama. And, add, and, and the goal of the panchakarma is to actually move this ama that's accumulated in the joints and the tissues and the liver and the kidneys and the brain everywhere yeah. throughout the body. And, and there's even mental ama, right? Mental process, emotional ama, ama that we have not, things that we have not digested, right? That we have not metabolized. So in the okay. same thing, stuck experiences, emotional trauma. These are things that we haven't metabolized, worked through. And so when that's present, the idea of panchakarma is to move all this ama, physical, mental, emotional ama, even spiritual ama into the body. Like we move it through the body tissues into the GI tract, and then we eliminate it through the, the stool, through yeah. the urine, through the sweat, and, and through the breath to some degree. So that is one way that we can get rid of this ama and, and process these things. And that requires mm -hmm. increasing digestion. So I, I have a, yeah. an entire chapter about digestion yeah. and elimination. Digestion is not just this sort of digesting food. It's how do we increase mental digestion? How do we Love increase- it emotional digestion, our capacity to digest, then that that improves, that reduces the amount of ama that gets distributed throughout the body and the ama that's there, this sort of metabolic waste, this these unprocessed experiences, unprocessed food, unprocessed metabolism at the cellular level, that stuff can then get metabolized because our digestion at the cellular level, right, the cellular digestion, the GI tract digestion, the mental and emotional digestion starts to increase and we can now move that stuff through yeah. and out of the body. And when we do that, intelligence returns, life returns, flow returns, right? Yeah. So, so this is a, a really cool thing that Ayurveda brings is that through this physical panchakarma, we can now digest emotions. We can now process these stuck experiences. So there, and fasting does this, right? So we see this in religious texts throughout the world. Uh, Western uh, you know, medicine is starting to come online here with, yeah. with intermittent fasting and fasting, but that's what fasting does. It improves digestion, not yeah. only just yeah. physical digestion in the stomach and the small intestine, no, 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 at the cellular level, we improve digestion. And that's why during some fasts and during some panchakarmas, you can actually go through these very difficult emotional experiences. So there's yeah. a ton of ways that we can process yeah. these things. But that's the, the reason that why I focus on it so much in the book is because as we process these, these experiences, these stuck experiences, mental, emotional, and, and to some degree physical, our body behaves differently. 
this expression yeah. of the body starts to behave differently. Our thoughts behave differently. So that is the ama that we're cleaning up, the metabolic waste. Mm -hmm. So what's really cool is that we can we can we can do something like a panchakarma. We can do a, a yeah. three to five day water fast and see what happens there. We can go for longer. There's really long water fast that people yeah. do. There's there's dry fast where you don't even uh, include water for a day or two. Yeah. Right? Like there's there's really interesting things that we can do as well as the adult attachment repair model, as well as the the ayahuasca's and the the psilocybins and the MDMA assisted therapies that are coming online and the ketamines, you know, mm -hmm. and the, the, the EMDR, right? The yeah. eye movement desensitization, um, repatterning. There's all kinds of these techniques that we can bring in family constellation to specifically address these entanglements with family mm -hmm. members, right? So mm -hmm. there are really cool therapies and there's not yeah. one that's, that's better than the other. Yeah. Every person may have a more of a draw towards something and every person may need more of this versus that. Yeah. But I can tell you that they're all very helpful. So the more yes. we can bring into the equation, the more we start processing these things, getting a better understanding of ourselves, and we can we can start to operate better on not only that a mental and emotional level, but on the physical level. This is the this is the hidden gem for so yeah. many that are trying to work the physical and detox the physical. Yeah. You gotta get into the mental emotional processes as well. I'll never forget. I was at a biohacking conference and I asked Karan Krishnan, you know him, you had him on your show once. Yeah, on great. He's great. He's a microbiologist. He's like leading the way on a lot of the, you know, gut, gut microbiome. And I, uh, he got done speaking and I have a, I had a client at the time who, um, had just came to me with methane SIBO and I was like, Hey, just, I'm going to be selfish since no one else is asking a question. I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, what are your thoughts on methane SIBO? And he just like, it shocked me because I had just finished listening to his super technological science class presentation. And he was like, listen, if the, if the mental emotional stuff isn't addressed, it's just going to keep coming back. Like that's how he started his answer. And I was like, oh, I know that, <laughs> but thank you yeah. for, thank you for confirming that, you know? And it, it's just like what you were saying. It's like, I, I love what you're saying with like the mental and emotional digestion along with you know, what we typically think of digestion, because it is so you can parallel that to Western medicine, you know, the way we, we do it in the West is like, yeah, because if you are chronically stressed or you have unresolved trauma, your vagus nerve becomes dysfunctional and you get gut issues. So as they all work together, even on like a, you know, a meet somebody where they're at and their science-based mindset, you know, and I love, I also love how you bring Ayurveda into it too. Cause we kind of connected on that when we first met, it's just such a, so many beautiful, wisdom based teachings in that practice. I love it too. Okay. Last thing. Um, practicing mindfulness. I can't mm -hmm. not get to that one. Of course you have exercise, you've got eating to thrive. We didn't get to everything guys. We'll link up the book in the show notes, make sure you get it. It's called beyond longevity, a proven plan for healing faster, feeling better and thriving. Did I get that right? You got it. Thriving at any age. Right. Yes. Okay. So, um, practice mindfulness. What are your thoughts? What favorite, you know, do you, what are your opinions on mindfulness, favorite ways to do mindfulness? Yeah. Well, I think it's first important to recognize that as humans, we have a negativity bias, right? So that means every day we are trained, we have conditioned ourselves and, and the society is also reconditioned us to, further to look for the negative, right? To look yep. for the danger, right? So yeah. um, if we go back, you know, a thousand years then or 200 years, or if you go to some societies around the world now, they're living in, in, in an environment where, that provides danger all around them. Yeah. So we must be vigilant to the environment because it's, it's not a safe place um, right. if we're not aware of our environment. So we're constantly seeking danger, the, the yeah. danger signals, right? And so we're still hardwired for that, right? And to some yeah. degree, our, our modern environment provides plenty of danger signals yes. um, as, it, as, it, as it were. So, yeah. so that's the, the thing to recognize is that we are conditioned that way. You know, mm -hmm. And they say it's about 80% of our thoughts um, tend to be of the negative uh, origin, right? So we're having a you know, four to one ratio of negative to positive thoughts, right? And so that's, that's unconscious. And so that part um, is there. So that's a, that provides a really good opportunity to start to swing that into our favor, right? So now all we have to do is just consciously engage with more positive thinking to yeah. look for the silver lining in things, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, gratitude is, is a fantastic practice that many people have started to adopt or at least trying to in some way or another, right? The easiest way to do that if you're, if you're new is to, you know, at the beginning of your day or at the end of your day, write something down and, and actually make it a practice, right? And just like anything yeah. else, right? Just going, like going to the gym, it's 
it's difficult for somebody to, to start that process if it's not part of their routine, if it's not part of their lifestyle. Yeah. But eventually it starts to become part of their lifestyle, part of their habituated patterns, and then it becomes easy. Same thing with this. We can take a journal and we can just write things yeah. that we're grateful for. And it doesn't have to be big, right? Like, I mean, if you've ever experienced an injury, right? Where let's say it's your knee or yeah. you have a sore knee, like just being able to walk is, yeah. is a beautiful thing to be grateful for, right? So there's yeah. a million, billion things that we could be grateful for every day and it's, it's not hard. It's yeah. just the, the point is to actually get into the practice yep. of thinking about how your life is actually blessed, right? Yep. And so the, the, the extra sort of bonus points to that is if you can feel into your body as you do this. But just yeah. having those positive thoughts is a good start to, to think yep. about something good in your life. And then yeah, as you feel into those, you can drop into your heart, into your belly, yeah. into your core, and you yes. can begin to feel what it's like to, to feel how good it, it feels to have the things in your life yep. that you have. So that's just an easy way. Then a sort of more advanced practice would be to go throughout your day. And as you're engaging with your day, as often as you can remember, and you can even set an alarm on your clock, uh, on your phone, whatever you want, but, but try to remember as you're, let's say, buying groceries, as you're swiping your card or giving some, nobody gives cash anymore, basically swiping your card or your phone and you're buying your groceries, how good it feels to be able to have the money in your bank account, as little yeah. as it may be, yeah. to even buy the food at the grocery store because yep. there's so many people around the planet who don't have that luxury. Yeah. Right? So we can actually in, inject this throughout our, our day, right? And so um, when I'm hugging somebody, I can feel how great it is to, to be connected to this person. This is something, it's, it's simply practicing yeah. all the things um, throughout your day and, and bringing gratitude, bringing awareness to what's here and, and being grateful. So, so we can turn that positive thought process, the, the ratio in our favor, right? Instead of yeah. four to one, now maybe it's, you know, four to two, right? It's a two to yeah. one ratio, right? Now we've just increased our positive thoughts and the feelings in our body, more importantly, that's really what, what, what the yeah. end goal is, yeah. is to be feeling this, this beautiful uh, gratitude and, and well-being yeah. throughout your day as often as you can, hopefully stabilizing it eventually to where you're walking around in well-being. And you can get angry from well-being and you can, be, um, you can be disappointed from well-being. You can experience the range of emotions, but there's a deep sense of well-being because you've stabilized this. So one of the things that we can do is we can do the unconscious work. Right, the subconscious work, yeah. the, the, the the ayahuascas and the EMDRs right. and the family constellations and all that type of work. DNRS yeah. is one I, I really want to name for, for those who have maybe mm -hmm. heard of that. It's a dynamic neural retraining system. It works on the limbic system, which mm -hmm. limbic system um, ruptures or injuries are at a core for a ton of syndromes that are out there that people can't find mm -hmm. resolution to. So if that's you, mm -hmm. DNRS, go take a look at that. Um, but, but we can get to the unconscious aspects of these things. Um, and to some degree, DNRS actually works on the conscious repatterning of these things um, huh. and, and, and uses the neuroplastic um, science that we have now. So it, we're actually using neuroplasticity, the science of neuroplasticity huh. to grow new neural pathways and that's the key, right? So this is what mindfulness can do. It can start to lay down the tracks for new neural patterns so that we're walking throughout our day and we're starting to see the world with fresh eyes. That is key. Mm -hmm. and, and we've all probably know somebody like this that's a little bit more of an Eeyore than we are, right? a little bit more of a downer than, than we are, right? Yeah. And it's like, you, you see these people and they're just like, man, they pick apart everything. They're so judgmental. They're so critical. They're so uh, things just always seem to happen to them. And it may not even be quote unquote their fault, but it's like their world is, is just a yeah, mess. It's hard right? to be around. Yeah. Exactly. And so, and so of course their, their confirmation is that the world is a tough place, a scary place, a challenging place, right? It's not in their favor. It's very difficult, you know, like yeah. all these things. And so, and then you see these other people perhaps in your life that you can look to that are they're always freaking happy. And yeah. they always seem to have it dialed in. They're always got a smile on their face. And it's like, yeah. things seem to go in their, in their favor. And even when they don't, that's like, they're not too disrupted, right? Yeah. That is a different place, right? So, yeah. so we can move ourselves on that spectrum, mm -hmm. um, hopefully toward the, the more positive, but that actually does reframe our entire day. And it yeah. starts to change our reality. Again, this is what was really weird. It's not just the internal reality, which is important, right? We're changing our cellular genetic expression, yeah, right? True. Toward health and yes. well-being. But now yeah. we're ch our, 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 our outside reality is actually reconfiguring, right? Like that's the weirdest thing. And you know this, Tara, we've talked yeah. about a lot of this, um, of course. just on the side. And it's like, this is the magic that gets yeah. to show up when we come into alignment with a deeper yeah. truth because yeah. one truth is that the world is hard and it is yeah. a cruel place and there's a lot of shit and there's a lot of suffering that is that is true 
And yes. there's a greater truth, right, yeah. to that, which is yeah. that it's all in your favor. It's all working yeah. here for you, and you can align with a with a with a with a more harmonious path. That is an option, and and you have control over that. And so that's yeah. where we want to get to. And so conscious repatterning. Um, and using sort of this mindfulness, a lot of mindfulness techniques, but it really just starts to getting to the point of just you becoming aware of your own thought patterns, yep. your own emotional patterns, your own beliefs, right? If you look into the coaching world and the business world and the success world, this is a lot, right? Like what are these beliefs that you have yep. about yourself, about money, about business, about relationships, yep. right? And where do those come from? So we can work those, we, but it first starts becoming with becoming aware of them. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you just summed up why I named this podcast inside out health. You just yeah. summed up why my higher symbol is an Eagle coming out of the inside of a mountain is like, go inside, baby, yeah. go inside and do that deep work. Listen, the answers are in there. Like take a look. And I, you're right. I mean, it, whether you want to call it law of vibration or coherence or, you know, changing your frequency, it's like kind of all the same thing. It's just when you change, when you align yourself with higher frequencies, when you, and you, we can do it even like in an instant right now, I'm like, I'm so grateful that you're on this podcast, Jason. You're such an mm -hmm. awesome speaker. I'm so grateful you're here. Like, boom, you know what yeah. I mean? It's just, yeah. it can be in an instant. And I, I, I kind of want to circle this back to what you said in the beginning of how we are all connected. And in like, so when doing this work, we benefit from it greatly, but it's, it's, you know, selfish in that way, but it's also selfless because my mom was one of those people you're talking about that, like, had nothing like heartbreaking levels of tragedy in her life, always struggled financially. And, you know, but she was so grateful, like ridiculously grateful. Like she, she maybe it was a coping mechanism. I don't know, but she was so constantly and she meant it. Like if someone did the least little thing for her, oh, that was so nice of them. I can't believe they did that. that you know, she was just so grateful and it rubbed off on me. I'm the same way, you know, like I, it's just like, oh, oh, you know, it's just, and so it affects, it affects everyone around you, you mm -hmm. know it affects the collective so yeah. and, and and none of this guarantees that you're going to live a long life yeah like that's what's funny right so, yeah so again it gets back to this idea that like that isn't the goal but if i can show up in in right relation to myself yeah. in right relation to yeah. god in right relation to to those around me in the environment in my community now i'm starting to uh, metabolize all this old yeah. crap that's been around yeah. our societies and our cultures for a long time. We can begin to change this, right? Like we, yeah. I think it's it's pretty universal that everybody wants to live in a better world. Well, that starts yeah. really with us, right? And yep. what, the impact that we can make that's is it. not, it's not small and it's not linear. So as we start to shift ourselves, selfishly, we get to experience even this harsh, crazy madness world that we're living in, right? Which yeah. is it's just chaos. Yeah. But we can become the eye of the storm of that chaos, yeah. right? So we can actually be in the center and, yeah. and feel at peace with the chaos, right? yeah. knowing that I don't need to change the entire world for me right. to be okay. Yeah, like this is a exactly. critical factor for so many of us is that we, we feel like we have to change everything around us for <laughs> me to feel safe when it's the opposite. The yeah. more I actually establish safety in my system and, and connection in my system, yes. well-being in my system, yes. and the world can be as chaotic as it needs to be, yeah. and I'm okay. I have acceptance it, it, with that. And it doesn't mean I'm passive. It means I get right. to do something about it too. That right. like, I would prefer to see it in harmony right. so that I, as I show up in everything I do, because this is a key factor, it, the, the things that we do, it's actually very little about what we do. It's about the energy from yeah. which we are doing them. Yeah. So if I'm coming from 100%. a line perspective, from a, a, a sense of deep service and well-being, right. then everything I touch, everything I yeah. say, everything I write will have that infused into it. Yeah. And the ideas and the sort of more tangible aspects will reflect it too. But there's an yeah. energy, there's a, there's a transmission that comes with these things. This yeah. is why some of these things have this intangible aspect to them that you can't really even put your finger on, but there's something deeply moving about it. There's something deeply yeah. um, uh, healing about it. So, so we can infuse this in everything we touch. And conversely, when we're coming from a distorted place, a wounded place, no matter how much, how well I intend something to yeah. come across, it's going to have a little bit of that distortion energy. It's going to have yeah. a little bit of that wounded energy yeah. coming from it, right? Unless yep. I get into my alignment, yep. right? And into that place that, that is always whole, that's never been separate, then I can infuse that, right? So, so as we yeah. start to do all this healing and uh, from the physical and the mental and emotional level, then um, 
I'm going to operate from my alignment, from that yeah. place of service, from that place yeah. of well-being and acceptance and truth, right? And, 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 and love and compassion. That's going to come through everything. And the purpose and the passion that I'm going to live my life from, that will naturally organize. I don't have to find yeah. my purpose, right? This is a big yeah. one that's talked about in sort of the blue zones and the longevity yeah. community. Yeah. And to some degree, the modern science are looking at purpose as a big thing and, yeah. and connection. Well, purpose is not something that we need to go search for. Yeah. It'll naturally show up if you just yeah. listen. And yeah. connection is not something we can just uh, we can just do. We actually have to, um, it, it, it is inherent within us. And there are things generally blocking that connection from happening. I mentioned a couple earlier when it comes to um, the, the attachment styles. If we aren't, if we're unable to connect because of wounding, yeah. I can try to connect, I can try to get into community uh, and yeah. it's just not going to work. Yeah. So, so, so these are the things that um, it's, it's inherent to who we are. Yeah. And uh, once we establish deeper levels of, of alignment with these things, they will naturally express. Right. Yeah. This, this idea of service, we don't have to try. It just yeah. shows up. It yeah. just, it's like, you yeah. can't help it. There's yeah. just no other way. Yeah. Right. And so that's what I'm super excited to continue to, on my path to deepen these yeah. things, because that means I get to show up in greater service because that's what I want. That's, that's, that's a yeah. deep, deep desire for me yeah. to show up in, in, and I don't mean ego service. I mean, pure service, like truly yeah. pure service. Right. And, and it's not as clean as it can be right now. And I know yeah. that. But yeah. as I do more work in this in this in this world, then it starts to become even more pure, and I'm able to hold a lot more, and I'm able to serve from a better place, right? So that's exciting to me. Like there's there's yeah. a lot more exciting things in longevity, yeah. which is again why I titled the book Beyond Longevity because yeah. it, it it can be uh, an interesting thing to pursue, and it's by no means uh, the most important thing. Yeah. I love that you're sitting back and looking at this at a deeper level. Cause you know, all the thing, you know, all the, all the biohacky things and all the, you know, you, you know, all that fun. And hey, it is fun. fun. Yes. And also it's, I, I, you know, I resonate with you on the, like sitting back, sitting back and kind yeah. of observing and being like, wait a minute here. Are we, are we aligned here? Or are we getting kind of off track? Like, hold on, let me, let, let me observe, you know? And I can sense that this is what that book is. That's also what the human longevity prize. Like, let's, yeah. let's observe, let's observe. I mean, you literally went all over the world just to observe and learn. And, you know, I told you from the first time I met you, I was like, you have like such a curious, you have like a childlike, like curious. Mm -hmm. If you ever hang out with Jason in person or see him at a conference, just look over at him. He's like, you're just curious, <laughs> really genuinely curious, you know? Mm -hmm. And so, and you also have such a gift for uh, speaking and, and, and sharing. And, and, you know, you can tell that you put a lot of effort into like, how do I communicate this with people, you know? And so yeah. it's like so great that well, you well, took all of that and put that I've in this book. You do that in your, in your sort of keto world, right? So the, the keto yeah. model, right, is, yeah. is a thing and it's not wrong, but it is limited, I believe, in context. And then yeah, you came, yes. came by and said, okay, well, look, how about we cycle this? How about there's, there's ways to do this where we're not stuck in, in ketosis permanently 100 yeah. of the time that's yeah. a deeper realization it's and so again same thing right like this is this is what we can do because in the longevity space in the health space if we don't pay attention we're going to yeah. follow a partial truth to its its logical conclusion right. which is disaster exactly right? so, so that's the that's the that's the danger that we have in this health world that if 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 we don't consider these other things then we're going to yeah. follow, follow these things off a cliff and it's not going to be good Right? Yeah. So, so technology is getting really, really impressive. In other words, the, the sword is becoming sharper and sharper. Now it's a double-edged sword, thankfully, yeah. right? So yeah. but we've got to be careful that we don't follow these things off the cliff and we, and we really put them in their proper context and yeah. then they will benefit us. Yep. It's uh, observing nature, observing patterns of success and aligning with our own intuition. Totally. And, you know, so yeah, Jason, thank you so much. We will link up the book in the show notes. Thank you for coming on again. If you guys missed, Jason was like one of my first, I think we were audio only back then. You were one of my first episodes. So thanks for coming on again. It's been oh, like thanks what, for probably two me. years it's, or so. So yeah, yeah, it's thanks. been a pleasure. I appreciate it.